What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I figured I'd give you guys a behind the scenes look of where I make my videos. So let's get to it. Actually, you know what, hold on a second, really quick. Um, make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at Real Seth Fowler and also give me a follow on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Seth Fowler. I do a bunch of live streams over there. It's a blast. You get some unfiltered Seth, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is what it is. Also in this video, if you couldn't already figure it out by the title and that intro I just did, I'm going to be giving you guys a behind the scenes look at where I make all my content, the studio, the office, and if you see anything in the video that maybe you're interested in grabbing for yourself, maybe you're a YouTuber and want to start up your own channel, or maybe you're just a sneaker head or you like computers or PlayStations or whatever else is in the studio um, I'm gonna leave links to all those things in the description below they will all of course be affiliate links so by clicking on those links you're helping my channel out a little bit and it gives you guys an idea of the kind of equipment that I use but with all of that out of the way let's just get right to it so this is the office. This is where I do all my editing. This is where I do all my twitch streams This is where I actually used to film my videos right over there in that corner now. It's just a Raven's couch, which I actually think is pretty cool. Go Raven. So I guess it only makes sense to start things off with the sneaker wall because obviously this is a sneaker channel and uh, these are all the sneakers that I wear on a relatively regular basis and at this point it's pretty much all of my sneakers, there's a couple that I've got on sale on my website. I realize this still looks like a lot of sneakers, but I've tried to cut it down to like maybe 75 to 80 pairs, which obviously is still a lot, but it's a lot less than I had before, so I'm pretty happy about that. Of course, you've got recent pickups like the Fear of God 1s right there. You've got one of my favorite pairs of 11s, the uh, Concord 11s right there, which I've been rocking a bunch. Thank you, Jordan Brand, for that. We've got the Ultra Boost 19s, which have sort of become a mainstay for me. I wear those on a really regular basis. Even though I don't love the way those look, they actually feel great on foot. You've also got, of course, the Jordan 1s. And as you know, Jordan 1s are my absolute favorite silhouette. So of course I have a lot of pairs of them. You've got things like the uh, Chicago Off-White 1s and the UNC Off-White 1s and then some more regular stuff like breads, royals, shadows, things like that. Pairs that I wear pretty regularly. And then down at the bottom, we've got some promo pairs that I've got from Jordan Brand. Huge thank you to them for that. In fact, a lot of these pairs are promos from Jordan Brand. And then over here, we've got some more off-white stuff like the off-white Prestos in the OG colorway, the black Nike Blazers, the Levi's Air Jordan 4s, the first colorway, um, some more stuff from Jordan Brand, the Why Not 0.1s. And I believe this is a pair that uh, was customized for me, I think can't tell. Uh, they had a really cool artist actually design this for me, which is sick. I'll show you guys that in a different video. We've got a couple of my threes. We've got the JTH Tinker threes, the Black Cement threes, and then we've got some of my fours, like the White Cement fours and the Travis Scott fours, and then also the very first pair that Jordan Brand ever sent me, which I believe was the Reverse Motorsports. Adidas wise, like I mentioned, you've got the Ultra Boost 19s. You've got some more Ultra Boosts. I had a lot more pairs, but I had to get rid of some of them just because they were so worn out. Then you've got some 4Ds. This pair Adidas just sent me. Huge thank you to them for that. Couple of Yeezys and then also this box that I got from Champs a little while back. Next to the sneaker wall we've got some of my favorite packages that I've gotten from brands. Um, that's not really one of them, that's just my 750 box because I have nowhere else to put my 750s. But we've got this crazy milk carton from Adidas, we've got this uh, insane Michael Jordan head from the uh, Gatorade collection from a couple years ago. Love that box. Actually I think it's from last Christmas or the Christmas before last. I don't remember exactly when it's from but seriously one of the coolest packages I've ever ever received. A really sick care package from Wheaties and Bose. I think it was some wireless headphones and like a wireless speaker and like a really cool hat. Love that. A couple more packages from Adidas and Puma. Huge thank you to Puma for the engagement gift once again. Seriously love those pairs. Also I've got a pair of uh, MCM Puma Cells that they sent me a little while back which I believe is a sample and one that I'm a little afraid to wear because it's MCM and I don't have any other MCM stuff. Then over here we've got my grail wall which is where I keep everything that's uh, I guess a grail you could call it. At the top you've got the Storm Blue Union LA Air Jordan 1s and the reason they're on the top is because I proposed to my girlfriend in that pair of sneakers so no matter what shoe it was that I proposed to her in that would be a grail regardless. I did think it was kind of funny that her name is Jordan and I proposed to her in a pair of Jordans and also it's the Union ones. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> now down to the uh, off-white Chicago ones. This is the pair that I actually got when I met Virgil Abloh at one of the office hour events. He signed it Air Fowler, which I thought was so, so sick. And the only time I ever wore this pair of sneakers was for the on foot of the review. Other than that, these guys are staying in this case. Maybe one day I can get another pair that I can actually rock, but this is too sentimental and too important to me for that. And it's one of like my favorite pairs of sneakers ever. And the fact that it's signed and the fact that I got a chance to pick the artist's brain is 
unbelievable. So if you guys haven't seen that vlog yet, make sure to check that out. And then just below that, we've got the Tokyo Fives, which somehow I got for free at ComplexCon. I won a raffle for this uh, app, I think it's called the Zen app. And I kid you not, it's not because I'm a YouTuber or anything like that, I just got insanely lucky. I won this raffle, they were actually raffling off just a huge wall of grails. It was kind of like a draft and I was second in line and uh, the guy before me picked a pair of Pharrell's, which I think is kind of nuts. And uh, the Tokyo Fives were still there, which is unbelievable. So I have these in my size, they made me walk out in them, so they're not DS anymore, but that's okay because I'm never gonna get rid of this pair of sneakers. Below that, we've got my first pair of sneakers from StockX, it's the Adidas Futurecraft 4Ds. I love this sneaker for a bunch of different reasons, but mainly because it's got a 3D printed midsole. And as an industrial designer, that's such a cool concept. It's not the most comfortable sneaker in the world, but it's still a really sick pair of shoes. And then below that, we've got the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 1s, which I got lucky enough to have him sign the box of. And then just below that, we've got a sample pair of PODs that Adidas gifted me, so huge thank you to them for that. I only have a few drop front boxes, but I keep some of my favorite most worn sneakers in them. I've got the UNC Off-White 1s, the Chicago 1s, the Shattered Backboard 1s, and then the Off-White Prestos, which I've worn like a ridiculous amount of times. They're getting beat, it's a little scary. And then just above that, we've got my uh, 100,000 subscriber plaque. So huge thank you to YouTube and you guys in particular for uh, just supporting the channel. To the left of that, we've got this uh, couch that the dog has pretty much made his own couch. I don't even use it, it's uh, where Ben sits most of the time. We've got a Sean Witherspoon pillow, even though I don't have a pair of Sean Witherspoons. <laughs> we've got the, uh, the Ravens blanket, shout out to Jordan's mom for that, I really appreciate it, and for the hat actually too. But I'm a huge Ravens fan, I grew up in Baltimore, um, I left when I was 18, and just haven't really moved back, unfortunately, but it's a nice little piece of home, which I love. And then just above the couch, the question that you guys have probably already had is, what the hell is that? Well, this is a giant uh, Vans outsole. It's not a real outsole, it's actually made up of um, cardboard. I used to work retail at the Vans store, and I helped open the uh, Columbia Mall store in Maryland, and one of their displays was this giant cardboard, like Vans Authentic, and I asked if I could take it with me, and for some reason, they said yes, which is crazy. Now there was an entire cardboard shoe that went along with this, but over the last like 10, 12 years since I've had the shoe, it's kind of all fallen apart, except for the uh, outsole. So, I mean, I'm a sneaker channel, so I might as well have a giant cardboard outsole, I guess. I don't, I don't know why I haven't thrown it out yet, to be honest, but there it is. What are you doing? You just came to visit while I was filming? Is that what you're trying to do? Oh. <laughs> are you stretching, are you serious? You're crazy. What are you doing? He's a big Ravens fan. And then rounding off the office, we've got the desk setup, which is a lot of my favorite things. All of it just comes together to create this really great, powerful workstation that I use on a daily basis. So I guess to start things off, we should probably talk about the brains of the entire operation, this HP Omen desktop. I bought it on Black Friday, I believe for 1500, and the reason I grabbed a pre-built is because the price was actually incredible. It has an RTX 2080 in it, which is kind of insane because those retail for pretty much $1,200, and I got a whole pre-built for 1500, so I felt like that was a good price. I definitely need to upgrade the power supply though because it's kind of giving me some issues, and I think it's a really crappy power supply. So that's something that I'm going to do eventually. Probably add more RAM. It only came with 16 gigs, and especially for video editing and gaming and things like that, I definitely want to have a little bit more RAM. On top. Of the desktop we've got this Corsair gaming headset which I primarily use for my PlayStation but it has really great audio quality and then the mic isn't bad it's a little tinny but it's not terrible I think I grabbed that for like 60 70 bucks off Amazon I'll definitely leave a link to that in the description below if you guys are interested next to the desktop we've got this really great 4k Dell monitor the reason I grabbed this is because it's got really great color accuracy so it's great for editing videos obviously you can't tell how good it looks uh, because I'm filming it on a camera and then you guys are watching it on your own screen, but it's a really excellent monitor. 27 inches, really thin bezels. Also, I have this uh, Logitech webcam that I use for streaming. It kind of gives the desktop a notch, so even though this isn't an Apple product, you know, sticking with that Apple aesthetic right there. <laughs> Just below that, we've got the uh, apparently blasphemous mismatching Razer and Steel Series peripherals. We've got the uh, the Razer keyboard here, the Razer mouse, and then a Steel Series mouse pad. The reason I went with these is because honestly, they were cheap. They were on sale on Black Friday, and they're perfect for what I need. They're wired, so they're they're fast. Um, I probably will eventually upgrade them to Corsair to match the headset, but that's not for a while. And then just above those, we've got this uh, Supreme. B&O Bluetooth speaker, which I used to use a lot, and now that I've got this desktop set up, I don't really need it as much. Really excellent audio quality, because it's a Bang & Olufsen product, and they make really great audio equipment, so definitely a great speaker to have. And then as you can probably see, I've got some PlayStation controllers right there, and that's because I've got a PlayStation Pro hidden behind the whole desktop setup right there. It's the uh, Glacier White, I think. 
is the one that I grabbed. It was the Destiny 2 bundle. Um, I've had like three or four PlayStations, but I really wanted a Pro for streaming, which is funny because I don't even use the PlayStation to stream on anymore. It actually gets some pretty good airflow back there, so I'm not too worried about it overheating, even though it's got some wires on it and things like that. But uh, I play Red Dead on that. I play uh, <laughs> Fortnite, PUBG, all those PlayStation games. I mainly just play on this with my friends after I'm done editing, so that's sort of a fun little thing to have back there. We've got the Wacom tablet right here. This is an older model. This is the Cintiq 22 inch from I believe 2012 or 2013. Really, really excellent sketching tablet. The color accuracy is okay. It's not incredible, but the actual pen um, sensitivity is really, really great. I've also got the pen off to the side right here. Really great sensitivity. Um, it, it really catches every little motion, which is excellent and very important when you're sketching digitally. Um, if you want to replicate hand sketching, you need something that's really precise. And, and this is probably the most precise tablet I've ever owned. I've owned iPads, I've owned Surfaces. Um, you can't beat a Wacom tablet, you really can't. And it also acts as a second monitor, which is nice. So when I'm Twitch streaming over here, I can have like the, uh, the stats and everything going on over here, which is great. And then rounding off the command station, we've got the newest pickup right here, the Secret Lab Omega. It's a gaming and uh, just, I guess, desk chair. And I did a lot of research about what the best chair is and what's gonna last the longest and be the most comfortable and be the best looking and this is the one that pretty much came out on top on every list and I've got to say I am very 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 happy with it the quality of the materials are excellent um, every little detail is really nicely done like you've got this beautiful red stitching putting it together took about 45 minutes and it helps to have two people but I was able to do it with just one person I did struggle a little bit but it definitely wasn't too bad huge shout out to secret lab because after I posted a picture of this on Twitter they reached out and they wanted to make me an affiliate and I said absolutely because I love your product so if you guys want to grab a Secret Lab Omega Chair, make sure to use the link in the description below because not only do you get a great chair, but it also helps out the channel, which I would really appreciate. But super nice chair. It is a little bit more on the pricey end for gaming chairs, but it's one of the best and it's gonna last you a long time. So really happy with that. And then I guess to round off the loose ends in the office, we've got this GoPro Karma drone, which my uh, fiance just got me for Christmas. I'm really excited about that. I haven't actually had a chance to fly it yet because where I live in Philadelphia, it's very difficult to fly this drone. Um, what's up, Ben? And the reason I actually prefer the Karma to something like the DJI is because you can actually take the GoPro out and put it on a on a gimbal, so you can have this really great steady cam situation. So it gives you multiple use cases, which I think is great. And then you've got this backpack over here, which has got the Karma grip, the controller, extra propellers, things like that. Um, just below that, a little piece of hype right there, that little Supreme toolbox. Don't know why I bought that, but it's there nonetheless. And then next to that, we've got a piece of history, which I don't talk about much on the channel. My acoustic guitar, my mic. Uh, I used to use this for Twitch streaming. Now it's broken, so it just broke like yesterday, so kind of ticked off about that. But the acoustic guitar is an Epiphone. Absolutely love it. Uh, a little not so well-known piece of information about me. I used to play a lot of guitar and sing. Back in college, that's what I love to do. Uh, I recorded a lot. I actually toured a few times. I went to the UK on a tour, which is pretty incredible with one of my friends. And um, we got some stuff on iTunes, we won some competitions, it was it was a blast, absolutely insane. So singing is a part of my life that you guys, you know, haven't really seen or heard of or anything like that. And maybe I'll, I'll talk about that more in the future, but that's kind of just what I do on my off time. It's something I love to do. And uh, these are all little stickers that I've gotten from, I don't know, just going around and doing different things. Oh, also, shout outs to Burrow for sending over this couch. They sent it over a couple months back. Um, it's this modular couch system, which you can actually set up on your own. It's really cool the way it works. They sent over like a bunch of boxes and you set it up kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, which is pretty cool. Um, I did some unboxings on it, so that's why I'm including it on the video, but super nice looking couch, super comfy. Love it. So this is it, this is the studio. This is where all the magic happens, to be cliche about it. This is the backdrop you guys usually see me on. That's the bench that I'm usually sitting on. We've got the uh, back lights right there, these two LED lights. And then of course we've got the uh, studio dog. What's up, dude? How's it going? So pretty much all of my videos recently have been filmed here. I like to change out the background color every so often with these different colored papers here. Um, we've got gray, green, yellow, and then white in here, which I still haven't used yet. Um, I think it just gives the background like a really clean sort of look. I don't know if I'm totally gonna stick with that yet. I haven't been like 100% happy with how it's been looking, so we'll see what happens. I also miss the shelves that I used to have in my old, old studio where I could put shoes and stuff up on, which I thought would look really cool. So we'll see what happens with this. To the left, we've got the C stand, which has pretty much become a hat rack and all also a, a lavalier mic rack, but I use this mainly for the overhead shots when I'm doing unboxings. Um, you've got to have a little weight on the bottom as well just so it doesn't topple over, but I screw my other camera into that end right there and you can get some really nice downward facing shots or overhead shots, which I think look really great. And then just below that, we've got the unboxing table right here 
We've got my main editing rig, which might surprise you. It's a 2015 MacBook. I use uh, Final Cut Pro on this, and then I have Premiere on my other computer. I primarily edit on this, though. I'm still transitioning over to Premiere, which I also have in this as well. Super happy with this computer, and whenever I need to get out a quick edit, I use this guy, or when I'm traveling, I use this guy. Still haven't had any issues with it yet. Behind that, we've got this Manfrotto travel tripod, which I've used many, many times for like events and shoots and things like that. It's works wonders, it's incredible. Below that is my old mic. It's an old uh, Rode Video Mic Pro, I think, or maybe the one that I'm using on top of my camera right now is the Video Mic Pro, but that's been a great mic. The only problem is, is it kind of just like flops over on top of your camera and looks, um, well, I'm not gonna say what it looks like, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's gotten a little floppy over time. Below that, we've got my extra battery pack, my Samsung Solid State Drive, which I edit off of. Uh, we've got this really nice camera um, slider. I've barely ever used it, but it's super cool, and someone from my old job gave me that, so I really appreciate that from them. You've also got this sort of a cheap monitor, which I use because Sony's don't have flip-out screens, so I use this whenever I'm filming videos. And I'll show you guys in B-roll how I get this set up, because my main camera, obviously, is not on the tripod at the moment because I'm holding it. And I guess while we're on the topic, my main camera is a Sony a7 III, which is by far my favorite camera I've ever used. It has really great 4K video quality, which is the main reason I picked it up. Um, it's super light, it's mirrorless. The one problem that I've had with it is that the audio jack has broken on me twice, which is kind of ridiculous, but apparently that's a pretty widespread problem. And then the lens that I'm using on it right now is the 24 to 105 Sony GOSS. It's an unbelievable lens. It's got great zoom. It's got great bokeh. Uh, it's, it's so versatile, it's crazy. And surprisingly enough, actually this lens over here is the standard lens that came on it. It's the kit lens. It is the uh, 28 to 70. And this has been an incredible lens for me as well, even though it doesn't look like it's the most quality lens in the world. It's actually, I mean, it'll blow your mind. It's, I think it's $400 if you buy it outside of a kit. And it's actually worth it. Genuinely, it's been a really great lens. Then to move over to my second camera, which I use for those sort of downward facing shots and any sort of backup shots that I need, I've got a Sony a6500 with a fixed 16 millimeter lens on it. It's a really great lens and a really great small camera. It does overheat every so often, which is a little frustrating, but um, I just don't use it too often, so it doesn't bother me as much as it can or could if you use it as a main camera. Because it is a slightly lower end camera than the a7 III, it is a crop sensor, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. And then to the left, you've got some of my shelves, which I use for all my rejuvenator stuff down there. Odds and ends in that guy. Um, you've got another tripod, uh, a light, things like that. Just sort of odds and ends that I don't use too much. The tripod that I have might not be the most high-end tripod. It's a Purestone um, VT2500B. And I think I got it for like 250 bucks, like 15 years ago. And it's okay, it's got a fluid head um, that works relatively okay. I might try and upgrade the tripod in the future. Um, it can get a little jittery at times, but not the worst thing in the world, but something I've had for so long, I just haven't needed to upgrade it. Next to that, we've got the newer ring light, and that's the name of the brand, newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. I grabbed this off Amazon for I think 150, and it's been pretty much my mainstay, like, key light in all my videos because it gets insanely bright. Pretty decent quality light, like it's a little plasticky, so if you don't like plasticky feeling things, this might not be for you, but good price, works pretty well. Eh, it's decent. And then moving over here, we've got the much more expensive light, the Drawcast or Dracast um, LED light right here. For some reason, I use this as the fill light and not as the key light. Not totally sure why, it just doesn't seem to have the same I don't know, the same effect that I like out of the ring light, but it was like 450 bucks used, so it was a little pricey. It has both daylight and tungsten features. I don't love this sort of U-shaped um, attachment because it doesn't allow it to actually swivel the way that I want it to, but you know, it works, it functions. <laughs> I mean, I should be happier with it because of the amount of money I spent on it, but it is what it is. Okay, but that pretty much wraps up the studio tour and the office tour for today. I'm so glad you guys could come along with me and check out where I make my videos and where I spend most of my time. Again, if you want to check out anything in the video that I mentioned or maybe just my social media, the links will be in the description below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.